Hello, and welcome to this presentation on urinary incontinence and pelvic relaxation. My name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham. The objectives for this presentation are listed here. Urinary incontinence can be divided into several different categories. The categories we will focus on are stress urinary incontinence and urge incontinence. Mixed incontinence is the occurrence of both stress and urge types in the same patient. Stress urinary incontinence occurs when intra-abdominal pressure exerted through the bladder overwhelms the urethra's ability to remain closed and urine is lost unintentionally. The normal anatomic location for the bladder neck and proximal urethra are intra-abdominal, which usually maintains continence because intra-abdominal pressure is distributed evenly across the bladder and the urethra. When the bladder neck and urethra fall from their normal intra-abdominal location to a place below the pelvic floor muscles, stress incontinence can occur. Stress incontinence can also occur if the urethra is just too weak to remain closed. Here is an illustration of the bladder and the urethra. If increased intra-abdominal pressure, such as what occurs with a large cough or sneeze, is applied to the bladder, urine can be lost involuntarily. This is more likely to occur if the bladder neck and proximal urethra are abnormally located outside of the abdomen and below the pelvic floor muscles due to aging or childbirth. Stress incontinence can also occur if the urethra is too weak to remain closed during a cough or sneeze. The clinical presentation of stress urinary incontinence is listed here. Evaluation of stress urinary incontinence is listed here. Management strategies for stress urinary incontinence are numerous and many can be initiated simultaneously. If conservative management is not sufficiently helpful, surgery can be offered. Vaginal pessaries are an option for the treatment of stress incontinence, especially for patients who wish to avoid surgery or who are not good surgical candidates because of old age or severe health problems. A pessary is placed into the vagina to support a fallen bladder neck and urethra so that incontinence is less likely to occur. Pessaries are fitted to the patient by the clinician in the office and subsequently managed by patients themselves through daily removal, washing, and replacement. Urge incontinence occurs when urine is involuntarily lost due to inappropriately timed bladder contractions. The bladder contractions may occur from a bladder muscle problem or an abnormal neurologic process such as multiple sclerosis. The clinical presentation of urge incontinence is listed here. The evaluation for urge incontinence is similar to the evaluation performed for stress urinary incontinence. Management strategies for urge incontinence are listed here. Medications are a primary treatment. Surgery is not helpful for this type of urinary incontinence. Now let's discuss pelvic relaxation, a common and important concern for aging women. Pelvic relaxation occurs when pelvic tissues are no longer appropriately attached to their correct anatomic positions in the pelvis. This usually occurs from aging of tissues in women with a history of vaginal childbirth, especially if forceps were used to deliver the infant. You should understand the difference between the terms listed on this slide. Mild pelvic relaxation is very common and is not considered pathologic unless the patient has uncomfortable symptoms. A cystocele is a herniation of the bladder into the vaginal space and can be easily seen by taking a speculum apart and placing the lower half into the vaginal canal. When the patient performs a Valsalva maneuver or bears down, the cystocele can be exaggerated. Cystoceles are sometimes accompanied by symptoms of stress urinary incontinence because relaxation and descent of the bladder neck and proximal urethra occur as part of the cystocele process. A rectocele is a herniation of the rectum into the vaginal space and can be easily seen by inserting the lower half of a speculum into the vagina upside down. This speculum orientation supports the bladder and allows the rectum to be better visualized. Valsalva maneuvers will exaggerate the rectocele. 
understand that cystoceles and rectoceles are quite common and are not typically symptomatic for patients unless they extend outside the vaginal introitus. It is also common to detect the presence of a cystocele and a rectocele in the same patient. Treatment of a mild to moderate cystocele or rectocele is unnecessary if the patient is asymptomatic. Anoraceles are less common and are harder to diagnose. They are herniations of the small bowel into the vaginal space and usually occur when the patient is status post a hysterectomy. The remaining vaginal apex where the cervix was previously located is where the herniation usually occurs. This photograph demonstrates procedentia, which is complete herniation of the uterus and cervix outside the vaginal introitus. This condition is always symptomatic. It's usually possible to reinsert the organ back into the vagina, however it can come out again with Valsalva. Here is another patient with uterine procedentia who is about to undergo corrective surgery. The treatment for pelvic relaxation and procedentia depends on the patient's symptoms, her preferences, and whether she's a good candidate for surgery. If the patient desires to avoid surgery and use a pessary, she can be fitted with one to support the relaxed tissue of a cystocele, rectocele, anoracele, or procedentia. Pessaries are not always effective, however, and patients often want a permanent solution. Surgery is the usual treatment for symptomatic pelvic relaxation. This is the end of this presentation on urinary incontinence and pelvic relaxation.